let's move on to combination. Um, combination is selecting R among N different elements in any order. Previously, uh, in permutation, we considered orders. Um, when we are selecting uh, two among four, uh, the order matters. The um, but in he here combi combination, um, uh, we don't consider ordering. So so here the number of combinations of n objects taken r at a time is the number of subjects each of size r uh, that can be formed from the n object. This number will be denoted by um, n choose r. Okay, and the the calculation of n choose r is like is here, uh, n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. This is how we calculate the combination. And okay, to prove combination, it is sufficient to prove r factorial n choose r equals to n permutation r because in the previous formula, uh, n choose r is equal to uh, n permutation r divided by r factorial. Uh, so let's let's uh, look at uh, how this formula comes. Um, and actually, uh, by intuitively, n choose r, it, it's choosing r items from uh, n, uh, uh, total n number of items and without ordering um, R number of objects, uh, but in the permutation, um, it picking R R items from n um, total items, and it consider ordering. So um, for for any um, event that in in n choose R for any event in n choose R, um, if we order that that event, then uh, that can become an event for n permutation r, um, and actually the ordering r items for a given um, event in in n choose r uh, that's that's r factorial ways. So so uh, that's how we understand this formula. And actually, f for a simple example, it would be um, nice to look at this simple example. So for uh, for permutation three, um, ordering three items uh, among four items, the the uh, the uh, by from by formula or by listing, um, there is twenty four ways. And for four choose three, there are four um four, four ways of choosing items. So among one two three four, four choose three, it's uh, choosing one two three or one two four, one three four. And two, three, four, and for each of items, uh, each of realization of uh, four choose three, um, we can order, uh, we can, um, we can order these items um, in R factorial ways. So, for example, if we are ordering one, two, three, uh, there's uh, three factorial of ways of reordering uh, the given item. And uh, this is same for any of um, four choose three uh, events. So, um, so the four permutation three um, is four times R factorial. So this is how we understand this formula. Uh, the term n choose r are generally referred to as binomial coefficients because they occur in the binomial expression. And actually, this thing is um, is called ihang jongri in Korean. And uh, here, n choose zero, the the um, number of y in uh, n number of rooms. Um, Okay, uh, let's uh, give you uh, 
simpler situation. So um, here x plus y to the third um, it's equal to x plus y times x plus y times x plus y and here for the x3 coefficient the the uh, if you want to get x3 uh, you have to get x from this box and x from this box and x from this box and here is zero it's um, counting how many times y is selected so um, uh, if you have x3 um, there's no choice for the y so it's a three choose zero uh, what about the coefficient for um, x x to two and y um, y selected one time so you can um, when you are calculating this formula um, you are getting x or y from the first box and x or y from the second box x or y from the third box and um, for x second y uh, y choose one time so it's uh, from these three boxes it's three choose one the selecting one y is three choose one and uh, for this uh, thing and for x times uh, y second um, you are selecting y two times among these three boxes you are selecting uh, two y's which is three choose two and and so on uh, so this is um, the binomial expression okay let's move on to example 2.11 Find the number of ways of selecting two applicants out of five and hence the total number of sample points in S. Uh, for example, 2.2. Uh, so in the example 2.2, we, we selected um, two applicants among five people. So, so it's um, five choose two. And so the five choose two equals uh, five factorial divided by two factorial times three factorial, and it the result is ten. Oh. And let's mo move on to this thing: partitioning a set of n distinct objects into k non-overlapping groups. Okay, it's it's um, described as like this. Uh, so the number of ways of partitioning n distinct objects into k distinct groups uh, containing um, n1, n2, and nk objects for each k distinct groups uh, uh, and where each object appears in exactly one group and the sum of n i's are equal to n. So summing up all this n1 to nk is equal to n and there are k di distinct groups and each distinct groups have um, n1, n2, and nk number of items and if uh, this is the case and if you are partitioning n distinct objects the possible number is uh, n choose n1, n2, and nk and actually this is uh, an extension for the combi combina uh, combination yeah, previously, uh, n choose um, previously, um, if you are thinking of n choose k, and actually this is um, n choose k, comma n minus k. So this. This thing is a little bit more of generalization uh, because um, if you are selecting um, k numbers among n and actually it's selecting uh, n minus k numbers uh, from n uh, because the, the, if you are selecting k number from n the opposite thing is n minus k numbers so actually you are participating n numbers with two sets that's a combination and and this generalization is um, you are partitioning n distinct objects into k distinct groups and 
The proof for this is actually very similar to proof for the combination um, because it's a, a kind of generalization for the combination and so um, actually it is sufficient to uh, look at this thing. Um, the, the, the n here is um, n choose um, uh, dividing n items into k subgroups and those k subgroups have um, these number of items each and um, uh, to understand the situation for any realization of this um, uh, thing uh, if we are um, if we are dividing um, dividing n number of objects into k group and for, for a one situation uh, actually there's n1 factorial, n2 factorial and nk factorial um, ways of ordering it to make it n factorial. Um, it sounds difficult but it, it would be easier if we um, have a a simple example. Let's let's think about this situation. Consider parti partitioning six objects into three distinct groups containing um, two, two, and two objects. Um, and one realization um, would be one, two as one group, and three, four as one group, and five, six as one group. Okay. Um, and um, how many, how many uh, ordering is possible for this realization to, uh, <clears throat> um, in, in this event, uh, the ordering is not considered in each of these, um, these box, uh, but, but for, for this n permutation n thing, uh, we need to consider ordering of this thing and um, how many ordering is possible? It's, uh, it, there's two factorial for this box and two factorial for this box and um, two factorial for this box. And actually it's uh, n1 factorial for the first group and two factorial for the second group and nk factorial for the kth group. So um, there's this number of ordering for one realization. So um, uh, n1 factorial, n2 factorial, and nk factorial times to the number of um, the, this number of this realization um, is result in n factorial, which is um, n permutation n. Um, uh, uh, think about the example for the combination and think about this situation. Um, you probably understand it why this is true or. Um, there's another proof in the textbook. Um, so if you ha have hard time understanding this situation, um, uh, probably you can read the textbook if that was easier. Okay. And let's move on to example 2.10. Uh, a labor dispute has arisen concerning the distribution of 20 laborers to uh, four different construction jobs. The first job requires six laborers. The second, third, and fourth utilize four, five, and five laborers, respectively. The dispute arose over an alleged random distribution of the laborers to the jobs that placed or for members of a particular ethics group on job one in considering whether the assignment represent injustice. A mediation panel desired the probability of the observed event, uh, determine the number of sample points in the sample space S for this experiment, that is determine the number of ways uh, the 20 laborers can be divided into groups of the appropriate sizes to fill all of the jobs. Find the probability of the observed event if it is assumed that the laborers are random, randomly assigned to jobs. Oh, okay, uh, this is very long story, but, but um, the point is that uh, we want to 
um, divide this 20 number of laborers group into four groups and each group have um, so first group have six members and second group four members five members and five members and actually this is uh, 20 choose six four five and five so so the total number for n is 20 choose um, six four five five Okay, let's move on to example 2.13. A company orders supplies from um, M distributors and wishes to place N orders. Uh, okay, so company ordering um, N items and there are M distributors and assume that the company places the order in a manner that uh, allows every distributor an equal chance of obtaining any one order and there is no restriction on the number of orders that can be placed with any distributor. Find the probability that a particular distributor uh, gets exactly k orders. Okay, so what's the experiment here? So the experiment here is a company is, is ordering n orders from M distributors. That's our experiment. And what would be a simple event here? Uh, so for a simple event, we maybe de describe uh, it this way. So um, since there are N orders, uh, we can make, so this is the first order, uh, second order, and here uh, it's Nth order. Um, we can describe it situation like this and the the character a is is a distributor so the first item a company bought it from distributor a and for the second item a company ordered from distributor a and and for third one a distri from distributor b that would be our simple events and how many um simple events do we have in this situation um for 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 a given position, there are m distributors. So um, m ways possible for the first position, and m items are also possible for the second position, and and so on. So it's m times m times m times m times, um, and how many uh, times uh, n times? So multi multiplying m um, n times. So it the total number would be m to n. And and uh, the next problem is that uh, what would be the um, uh, the event? So uh, find the probability that a particular distributor uh, gets exactly k orders. So this is the event that we are interested in. So um, we should count the number of this event. A particular distributor. Um, gets exactly k orders. So uh, let's say distributor i and gets exactly k orders. So uh, for for this simple event, uh, there's uh, 20 slots, 20 slots, and um, we should fill in i's exactly k times. So i exactly k times. So um, in here, in here, there are n positions. And among n positions, we are filling um, distributor i um, k times. Uh, so so n choose k, n choose k, and and uh, by n choose k, we fill i's uh, to k positions. And what's next? So so um, so here, this n choose k means that among the twenty positions. We fill i. Um, uh, we we fill k number i's. That's this thing. And um, what about other positions? We we have n minus k positions. Uh, so we filled k number of i's, and then we have n minus k positions. And for n minus k positions. Um, there's n minus one numbers is possible uh, because we cannot fill distributor i for for these positions since we are interested in uh, the the 
the particular distributor uh, distributor i gets exactly k orders so since we have i's exactly k times uh, for other positions uh, we cannot fit in distributor i so we can uh, fit in m minus 1 numbers so um, that's m minus 1 uh, to the m minus k uh, so so this is the number of k's that a particular distributor get exactly k orders okay and and in this situation uh, since the probability for ordering item from each distributor they are equally likely so we set the equal probability for all um all events so the probability for this thing is just um like that so probability of simple event is 1 over mn and so the probability for a particular distributor get exactly k order is um uh, this one divided by m to n and here are homework for 2.6 chapter 2.6 Okay, the next chapter is 2.7, conditional probability and the independence of event. So let's look at the conditional probability first. Uh, probability of an event will sometimes depend upon whether we know that other events had occurred. So, uh, so sometimes the probability of current event is depend on the previous event. Let's give one simple example. We have we have rain today. What would be the weather tomorrow? Uh, so um, if we have uh, rain today, probably the 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 probability for rain tomorrow may be different uh, with respect to the uh, today's weather. Uh, that would be the concept for conditional probability. And for the definition, it's like this. The conditional probability of an event A, given that an event B has occurred, is equal to um, this. So we, uh, we write conditional probability this way. Probability of event A given B. Uh, so it's uh, saying that the probability of A conditioning that the probability of B happened. And um, this is equal to probability of um, A intersection uh, B and divide by probability of B. And in the formula, of course, probability of B should be larger than zero so that uh, this can be defined. Uh, so that, so that um, um, and the, the symbol probability A given B is read probability of, uh, yeah. Okay. And let's look at the example, uh, simple example from table 2.1. And uh, it describes the table for event A and B. Uh, and and for, for events of A and B, uh, the intersecting ones, uh, n one one number of them are intersecting and for so so the situation is like this in the venn diagram uh, here n one one and uh, this is a and this is b Mm, and uh, B and not A, N12. B inside of the B, but not B, uh, not A, N12. Um, uh, inside of A, but not in B, N21. N21. And not A and not B. Uh, so this is our total space and this is n to 2. Okay, so this is the situation for this table. And uh, here, let's think about the conditional probability. What would be the probability of A? 
the probability of A, if the total number is um, n11 plus n12 plus n21 plus n22, which is the large n, um, and the probability of A is large n, um, uh, this, this thing over n, so so probability A is this thing, and what would be the probability of B? Probability of B is that the, the number for B is n11 plus n12, uh, n11 plus n12, and also in Venn diagram, n11 plus n12. Uh, that's the number of uh, simple events inside of B, so the the probability is um, n11 plus n12 divided by n, and what would be the probability of A given B? Um, uh, uh, from the definition, uh, from the definition, um, and actually this can be derived from here, um, probability of A given B. So given the situation B, what would be the probability of getting A? The total number for B is this thing, and uh, the the case for A is n11, so it's n11 divided by n11 plus n12. Uh, but but uh, by definition, it is probability of um, probability of A given B is uh, probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. So uh, so um, we let's look at probability of A intersection B. Um, which is uh, n11 over n. So probability of A given B is uh, the this thing divided by uh, this thing. That result in n11 divided by n11 plus n12. This. Okay, and and try uh, to calculate probability of B given A by yourself. Okay. Let's move on to example 2.14. Uh, suppose that a balanced die is tossed once. Um, use definition 2.9 to find the probability of uh, a 1, given that an odd number was obtained. Okay, so given that an odd number was obtained, uh, find the probability of uh, a 1. Okay, so uh, for the definition 2.9, this is uh, about the conditional probability. This is definition 2.9. Uh, um, yeah, co definition for conditional probability. And uh, what are the events? Uh, so, so experimenter he experiment here is that uh, tossing a balanced die and the simple events are um, observing 1 to 6. Um, so observing a uh, one would be e one, and observing six would be e six. And um, what are events? So events of this probability of a uh, one. This is e one. Let's say this is probability of a uh, that is e one. And given that an odd number was obtained, um, uh, an odd number was obtained. That's event b. Event b is. Um, observing odd numbers, uh, okay, that's our event B, and and let's calculate this thing. Uh, for the conditional probability, um, we should calculate this thing, and the probability of A intersection B, actually it's E1, and uh, probability of observing E1 uh, since every uh, simple event are equally likely, the probability of EI is 1 over 6. So uh, probability of observing E1 is 1 over 6. And probability of uh, event B is 3 over 6. And the result is 1 over 3. So this is our, the, our conditional probability for this example. Okay, next, uh, next concept is independence of events. Uh, 
for any two events A and B are said to be independent um, if any one of the following holds. So if any of following these holds, uh, we say that A and B are independent. Um, otherwise, the, the events are said to be dependent. And what do the what do this means? Uh, let's look at this thing. Uh, the the left hand side is probability of A given B. Uh, and if probability of A given B is equal to A, it it implies that the probability of event A do not depend on the event B. So so probability of um, event A given B, if, if it is equal to probability A, then the, the, the probability of A um, is not depend on the event B. So this is um, uh, independence. And to check the, the independence for the event, um, you should check one of these. Um, the simplest one would be this thing. Probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A times probability of B. Uh, and let's look at the example 2.15. Uh, consider uh, the following events in the toss of a single die. Um, A is observe an odd number. Uh, B is observe an even number. C is observe uh, one, or, one or two. And the question A is, are A and B independent events? And question B is, are A and C independent events? Uh, let's see. So the experiment here is uh, tossing a single die. This is our experiment. And what would be a simple event? Simple event is um, observing um, the, the one to six from die. So observing a one is E1 and observing six would be E6. And let's think about the uh, event, events A, B, and C. So what are events? Event A, observe an odd numbers. So event A is observing odd numbers. So uh, E1, E3, E5. Uh, so this is our event A. And what about event B? Observe an even numbers. So event B, we observe even numbers. E2, E4, E6 are um, event B. And what about um, event C. Event C, we observe uh, one or two, so E1 and E2. Uh, this is our event C. And uh, how to check independence? So we want to check the independence of A and B or A and C. The simplest way is that um, A intersection B, probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A times probability of B. Uh, just check this thing for to check independence. So um, actually you can do it uh, by yourself um, for uh, since this is simple. Well, the, the A intersection B um, is actually uh, nothing for, for A. So this is zero. For, uh, and probability of A times probability of B. Um, this is one over two, and this is one over two. So it is uh, one over four. Uh, so for A, um, are, the, are A and B independent events? Um, no, no, the answer is no for here. And are A and C independent? So um, probability of A, uh, is 1 over 2. Probability of C um, probability of C is uh, 2 over 6, so 1 over 3. Okay, and, and uh, probability of A intersection C is we only have E1, so probability of um, A intersection C is 1 over 6. 1 over 6. So probability of A intersection C is 1 over 6, and it is equal to probability A times probability of C. Uh, 1 over 2 times 1 over 3, 
which is 1 over 6. So um, A and C are independent. Okay. Let's move on to example 2.16. Uh, three brands of coffee, X, Y, and Z, are to be ranked according to taste by a judge. Uh, the, okay, so, so we are ordering uh, three coffees, X, Y, and Z. Uh, so our experiment would be um, ranking our coffee, X, Y, and Z. So a simple event could be um, order of um, order of X, Y, and Z. So a simple event would be uh, X, Y, Z. X would be the first rank, Y is second rank, and Z is uh, the third rank. And and uh, for our for all the simple events, the 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 way of ordering these three events would be the the all the simple events and. Uh, these are um, the, the, our event. A, uh, brand X is preferred to Y. Uh, the event B is that uh, brand X is ranked the best. And event C, brand X is ranked second best. And event D, brand X is ranked the third best. Um, if the judge actually has no taste preference and randomly assign ranks, to the brands, if event A independent of event uh, is event A independent of event B, C, and D. Uh, okay, so this is the question. And uh, here, let's describe the simple event first. So for a simple event, um, it's ordering three coffees. So E1 is X, Y, Z, E2 is X, Z, Y, E3 is Y, Z, X. So, so all the all the possibilities for ranking X, Y, and Z. That's our simple event. And let's describe uh, event, each event, A to D. A is that brand X is preferred to Y. So uh, X is ahead of Y. Uh, which event we have X um, is ahead of Y? Uh, E1, also E2, also um, E5. So the event A is E1, E2, and E5. And for B, uh, X is ranked best. X is ranked best. E1 and E2, uh, X is ranked best. And um, for uh, C, event C, brand X is ranked second best. Um, X is ranked second best, which is E3 and E5. And uh, brand X is ranked third best. Uh, uh, X is ranked third best, which is E4 and E6. So here's our event. And um, we want to calculate the independence of event A uh, and other events. So to do that, um, we check for probability of A, probability of B, probability of C, and probability of D, and also check for probability of A intersection B, uh, A intersection C, A intersection D. And let's see, A intersection B is E1, E2. A intersection, actually A intersection um, B uh, is actually B. And, and what about uh, A intersection C? A intersection C. Uh, A intersection C is um, E5. One, one, one item, E5. Uh, okay, and what about A intersection D? And actually, A intersection D is uh, null set. Um, this is null set. Okay, so um, we can calculate the probability. Uh, probability of A is um, 1 over uh, 2. Uh, since uh, all the events are equally likely, so uh, we 
put um, equal probability to all the events which is 1 over 6 and the probability for A is 1 over 2 and probability for B is uh, 1 over 3 1 over 3 for C, D, B, C, D uh, the probability is 1 over 3 and um, uh, probability of A 1 over 2 times 1 over 3 which is 1 over 6 um, so, so um, and, and probability of A intersection B uh, which is 1 over 3 and probability of A intersection C this is 1 over 6 and probability of A intersection D this is 0 so um, A and C are independent A and C are independent also in mathematics we uh, maybe I can I can write independent simple like with this so A and C are independent and um, A and B and A and D are not independent and here are homework for chapter 2.7 okay thank you